everyone, Kuro the Artist here, and welcome back to another Ben 10 Breakdown. The pilot of Ultimate Alien fame gave some high hopes that the series has finally found a balance in their new writing style after the fiasco of the Alien Force Season 3 change. But with Duped, for the second episode of the series, it really made a bad impression. And it didn't seem to improve the struggles that Alien Force Season 3 had, but enforce them. Duped is the 100th episode of Ben 10, and it appears that the crew wanted to do something special with it, as they would also do something special for the show's 200th episode in Omniverse. The original title was 10 Bends, but as you can see with the final result, it was eventually simplified to only be 3 Bends, with the episode renamed Duped. Ironically, a lot of my issues with this episode comes from before Ben splits up, and then finishes with his unwillingness to adapt. Instead of realizing his potential with this new power and working through the emotional difficulties, he just decides, nah, that was a bad idea, and never does this again. I wonder why that sounds so familiar. Why would they make the 100th episode of the franchise have Ben be so obnoxious and unlikable that all of the main characters end up walking away from him in the end, leaving him to sit by himself and reflect on his own idiot? Theocracy. Whose idea was this? And for the main character of his third series in a row, not only does it set a bad example, but also makes this practically unbearable to watch. And Ultimate Alien continues to flip in and out of this characterization for Tennyson for the rest of the show. If this is your first breakdown and you're curious about how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below, along with a link to all my previous episodes. But by all means, watch this video first. I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. If you're not already following us on Twitch, I stream every Tuesday at 2 p.m. EST. I'm going to start doing the Ben 10 Alien Force video game playthrough, so make sure you don't miss out on that. So without further ado, let's get started. Premiering on April 30th, 2010, Duped was written by Len Uli. With the Forever Knights on the rise, along with Julie's championship tennis match, Ben is torn between which obligation to prioritize. On top of wanting to catch the new Sumo Slammers movie, Ben decides to use Echo Echo to duplicate himself into three clones of himself, each with a very strong, isolated personality trait. As you could probably guess things don't exactly go as according to plan, and the three Ben struggle to try to create the best outcome for each scenario. Last breakdown, I was talking about how I like when UAF reuses locations. This museum location hasn't been reused yet, but will go on to become one. We see it again in Ben 10,000 Returns as the place where the trio retrieves the hands of Armageddon, and in Fight at the Museum is the same place that the Greens open up their extraterrestrial exhibit. And the Forever Nice just have a tank. I always wish that their tech would be pimped out with a more medieval style to it, to fit with their knights theme. They're the knights only in uniform now. None of their weapons or vehicles really fit the aesthetic. We go in fast, grab what we came for. Must be pretty hot in this room wearing all this metal. When it drives by, you can see the nozzle is already straight forward, but in this shot it's lowering down just to aim forward. Let me tell you something forever, knights! Wrath is laser proof. That's your first mistake! <laughs> Great response to being shot in the face. I love the aggressive motion blur to his roar. Hello? That's pretty funny. I love how he's holding this tiny little phone. Where's he keeping this thing, though? It'd be neat if the aliens had, like, a little utility belt or something that was on all the aliens. Where Ben can keep, like, his phone, his plumber badge, and all of that. I don't know. That would cause some difficulties with, like, different sized aliens and shape-shifting aliens, but... I mean, I guess it would be better than pulling this phone out of his... Ben! Where are you? I like how they took the time to animate all of the characters turning their heads to watch the tennis game. Let me tell you something, Gwen Tennyson. That's probably my favorite, let me tell you something. It's so disproportionate to Wrath's anger. Anger, but he's still got a hint of that aggression. He's like, let me tell you something, Gwen Tennyson. I love it. I was on my way there when I saw this tank pull up to the museum. The tank just rolled up, though, like not a minute ago. So he was late regardless. And for somebody that can fly and has super speed, he's not late because he couldn't get there in time. He's late because he doesn't care. <laughs> Funny how the knight trips a little bit as he's running. Wrath is so much stronger than I remember. Every time he does something like this, I'm always impressed. This water is very beautiful to look at, too. This shit must have taken forever. This frame alone, you can spend like a good hour on. These people definitely notice. They probably just don't give a fuck. Nobody does when you're old. Dun, 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 dun. Wow, someone had to draw and paint this whole building just for them to pan away from it. Ben does go to the movies later on in this episode. So it's funny that all three locations are still relatively close to each other. Cars are ever so slightly warped to this perspective, but the perspective of the cars here and the cars here don't really line up. Kind of creates a little optical illusion when you look at it. The National Junior Tennis Championship. This shot also went kind of viral in the fandom at one time because you can actually see a whole bunch of different bends in the crowd. Now just using model sheets to fill in a crowd I get, like it, it really doesn't matter. But I mean putting the main character in there multiple times as a background character, that's... 
That's freaking nuts. These characters are perspective warped as well. There's a celebrity in that crowd. Oof, maybe Ben should have snuck in as Big Chill. And of course, he just starts eating it up and whatnot. You know, way to steal Julie's thunder. It's not like you're causing a scene here or anything. Like, yeah, the fans are kind of doing it to themselves, but he's kind of endorsing this. Fault. Throws Julie's head out of the game, though. That's unfortunate. Sorry! That's kind of funny, though. I used to be the same way. Oh, he shouldn't be allowed to do that. Nice game, Julie! Although him climbing onto the tennis court is kind of reminiscent of the first time he asked her out. Except first time was just a smaller tennis match, and now she's performing in a large stadium. Shows the evolution of Julie's own career here. How would you know? Ooh, burn. You were late, and when you finally showed up, you made a big entrance and completely blew her concentration. Facts. And yeah, I guess taking out the Forever Knights was one thing, but like I said earlier, that tank literally just rolled up, so he was late no matter what. I can't help if I'm famous, right? And no remorse. That's that's what kills it for me, honestly. Like, sure, you could screw up. Nobody's perfect. Maybe he legitimately was late. He overslept or something. Ultimatrix is on the fritz. Gwen and Kevin are already here, so they clearly left without him. But it's the fact that he doesn't seem to care. That's, that's what gets me. No way in hell there would be dead silence in a stadium full of this many people. Also, is everybody just sitting here and watching this quarrel? Nobody's like getting up to get snacks or use the bathroom. The finals are in three hours. Any suggestions? Yeah, there's a plan. Ask me for girlfriend advice. Except in two episodes, he does try to give girlfriend advice, and we all know how that turns out. Okay, there we go. This is medieval. You revealed our intentions to our enemies. King Urien. This is another leader of a Forever Knight faction we've seen. First was Enoch, which was then taken over by Driscoll, so technically that's still the same faction. Sir Patrick, the one obsessed with space lizards. And now here's King Urien, voiced by Jim Piddock. Let's see what his whole deal here is. Lost our sole remaining plasma beam tank. You can see this faction has a sparrow on their crest. Maybe the Forever Knight logo changing constantly is canon, and each faction has their own logo. <laughs> Ayo, hey, uh, what? Upgraded armor. Shoots out a little zap zap. Well, I guess it's better than a freaking laser beam. This lighting is animated pretty cool. Electrocuted him so hard that his metal is smoking. Wonder if his skin was like boiling inside of that armor now. But if I'm ever to restore the honor of this. And there's actual ravens here too. Urian's an animal lover. Okay, so I was a little late. Why is he explaining himself to Gwen and not Julie? It seems like he only gets defensive when people call him out. Remember when he used to own up to his mistakes without prompt? Maybe we could try figuring out why those Forever Knights were trying to bust into that museum. Kevin's got a solid point too. Gwen and Ben, and kind of the audience, always forget that the Forever Knights are kind of dangerous. They're just easily defeatable and kind of a joke. But I mean, they're still out there like shooting things things up, stealing things, causing destruction, so they do need to be stopped. They're trying to steal some piece of alien technology so they can slay dragons or take over the world or whatever. Yeah, so we get their MO, but they're still out there doing that, you know? It'd be like if crazy shit was happening in our country and it happened so often that people are so desensitized and don't care enough to do anything about it anymore. So now we just ignore them when they try and take over the world? That's the American way. But this is Julie's first professional tournament. I do like that Gwen is trying to prioritize Julie's lifestyle too. It's easy to be like, oh yeah, saving the world versus a tennis match? Obviously go save the world. But that doesn't discredit that this is important to Julie, you know? This is just bad timing. I was thinking that while we were waiting around, I could go and catch Sumo Slammers the movie. This man is an idiot. He is literally creating a third problem out of nowhere just for the sake of it, like... Come on, Ben. The discussion is Knights versus Julie right now. You really want to make this shit more complicated than it has to be? In fact, if they have three whole hours before Julie's next match, they can all go defeat the Knights before the match even starts, since it's easy as hell, apparently. And then make it in time for the finals. And boom, problem solved. But, no. This is Ben we're talking about. And there's a 2 p.m. show just a few blocks? Hell, you could probably take Julie to go see the movie after the match. Turn it into a little date. It's just, why does he have to do it right now? Spoiler culture wasn't on the rise yet. But it's Sumo Slammers. It's their first live action movie. Oh, this is the movie that they were talking about in Vengeance of Vilgax. There's going to be a Sumo Slammers movie. Really? Live action? There's some continuity for you. You can't be in two places at once. Or maybe I can. <sighs> That's your takeaway? Oh god, here it comes. Pretty nicely drawn set here too, though. AF and UA was starting to get a little bit dry. But I think this interior looks nice. And right next to a mirror too, which means they're already animating two bends at once. And look at this. The dial pops up before he even twists. I swear, he activates it with his mind, I guess. And Echo Echo is ready to go. But do we get a custom transformation for him? In the 100th episode special with the one main alien who is yet to get one? 
fuck no. This is where reused animation looks really good. These three echoes are just the same one, but the way it's positioned and animated, it looks very solid and kind of seamless. Send your ultimatrix to human. Humans a setting now? One, two, I don't know why, but I've always loved that. There's a part of me that really loves cheesy stuff. And something about Ben going 1, 2, 10. It fits. I love it. I dig it. My first thought is if all of these Bens take off their jacket and then Ben merges back to normal, does he have three jackets still? He could start his own clothing brand. Just keep doing this to clone his jackets, sell them online as Ben 10 merch. You're rich. I didn't really think that was going to work. Why not? You're a smart guy. All of them speak with different inflictions. That's a nice way to tell them apart. You don't give yourself enough credit for that. So this Ben is very emotional. I think you're kind of a dope. This one's very judgmental and rude. This dope's going to see sumo slammers. And this one's kind of overconfident. In a way, it's almost like the three personalities that make up Alien X all got separated. Love and compassion, rage and aggression, voice of reason? Uh, that, that, that one doesn't fit. Never mind. Oh, jeez. Now they have to animate three Bens and their reflection. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll go with Kevin. Look at Ben being nice to himself. You could go watch Julie play in the tournament. So this is the second most frustrating part of the episode for me. If sensitive Ben went to Julie's tennis match, arrogant Ben went to go take on the Knights, and this Ben could just fuck off, then still problems would be solved. So Ben makes things harder for himself for no reason, still has a better solution, yet chooses to do things the most difficult way. She's always so nice to us. So this Ben proves that rational thinking and empathy is still in Ben's consciousness. He's just repressed. It. Like seriously, Knights, Julie, movie. Just do things in that order and you don't need any of these clones. But of course, it's shenanigans time. Where have you been? Julie's match is about to start. It's been three hours already? Also crazy that nobody walked into this bathroom yet. There's like thousands of people in that arena. What's with all the attitude? I'm Ben Classic. Miss me? Oh, I can't help but feel like that's the writers being meta again. Go investigate the Forever Knights. This mission's important to you. All right, not to beat a dead horse, but it's not just about being important to Kevin. You know, the Forever Knights are out there robbing shit. Look how big that soda is. Jesus Christ, my freaking blood pressure. Something's definitely wrong here. But so far, it's working out for me. That's like Kevin's whole personality right there. I'm off to the movies. Ben's little 10 badge is white. You know, since their feet aren't submerged, it looks like they're walking on water instead of through water. But you can see it's just a very thin layer of water. Oh, I think I recognize this. Yeah, this is the same device that Moldy Warp was using in Inferno. Good old red and silver. Except that's not what it did last time. Last time it just blew up. Julie Yamamoto is number one, baby! All right, at least he's trying to be supportive now, but holy shit, Ben. These clones definitely split up his personality, but does it also make him not self-aware? Where do you even get this foam finger? She loves the attention. Aw, oh, poor Julie, man. She must feel so embarrassed. My bad. Hey, remorse? Hey, other girl! <sighs> This is literally horrible to watch. I guess you could blame it on the clones, but still, like, regardless of why Ben is acting this way, this is still probably making her feel ultra embarrassed. And also causing a scene, too. Like, there's definitely footage of this being filmed, and Ben's gonna look back and watch this and be like, aw, jeez. <laughs> Yep, see, look at that. This is just nuts. Ben, any comment on Will Harang's editorials? Wow, John DiMaggio voicing a newscaster that's not Will Harang. And any comment on Will Harang's editorials? And he's even talking about Will Harang. That's so funny. I say TV's a dead medium. Just wait until Ben discovers streaming. I'm your biggest fan! Well, that makes two of us. You know what? No. Even if this is an isolated section of Ben's personality, this still shows that this is locked within him. None of these clones are acting like how Ben normally wouldn't. They're just an amplified personality trait. So this is literally just the worst parts of Ben all rolled up into one. And all of the good parts have been separated from him. This just puts on his display all of his self-absorbed egotism. Is that really your girlfriend on the court? Is this Pierce's girlfriend but blonde? She's showing up everywhere. She's really trying to get that alien d Hey, things change- Ow! Now that is horrible. Openly admitting he's willing to dump Julie at her own championship match. In front of a huge crowd, in front of cameras, just for some random blonde girl that he met two seconds ago. Like, again, I get this isn't Ben's complete personality, but these actions wouldn't exist unless they were already a part of him. We'll talk later. Sorry, Rap! And he doesn't even go sit down. He stays up here with them. This is the face of a man with zero empathy. <laughs>
At least Julie's kind of using it to fuel her game. That was pretty close, but she was so fast with the ball. I don't think we've ever honestly talked about our feelings. Oh man, you know, I love this scene though. The difference between this and the last scene is this is harmless. This is just Ben being goofy. We were enemies. Which is understandable, what with you being criminally insane back then and all. Oh boy, this is not going well. I talk about my feelings all the time. It's funny how Kevin is more offended that he doesn't talk about his feelings rather than he used to be criminally insane. Hacking the Omnitrix thing that turned you into a monster. Absolutely my fault that things went so south. But did you hear that though? He does feel bad about Kevin and he does understand that it was completely his fault because he jumped the gun way too early. Something that he also admitted to Asmin. I just don't think he's ever properly apologized to Kevin for it though. It's okay. You're still ahead. I'm here for you. Gwen's such a good friend. You! Shoot! I was gonna say that's a lawsuit, but Gwen's dad's a lawyer, so she could probably get herself out of that. Come on, it's just a dumb old tennis game! Whoa, <laughs> that is way too far. And he shouted that too, so everybody heard that. Split up or not, there's there's just no coming back from that. That's kind of unexcusable. Looks like they did draw some custom crowd members close around Ben before using a bunch of stock art for all the other ones, so. <laughs> Sound really carries in here. And no apology either. And it's not just because of this Ben either, because we did see right here that Ben does have a semblance of being self-aware and empathetic, even though he's primarily not that Ben. My bad. So if he's capable of feeling bad about embarrassing her, that shows he's capable of feeling bad about literally shouting that Julie's ambitions are meaningless to him. And he doesn't. He really just does not give a fuck. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. And this Ben is just out here wasting time. It's Slammer time! Might be a hint that Ben got his hero time catchphrase from Sumo Slammers. That would make sense. Oh yeah, these people. Sire, plant the device. And of course we haven't even begun to unpack the team's interpersonal dynamics. Sensitive Ben is still just going off right now. Which could get kinda... Ben! Man, I love this. This Ben is kinda how I can get sometimes too. I always feel like it's good to reflect on your relationships and dynamics with people. Not only to make sure everyone's on the same page, but to make sure that they feel appreciated too. You've always been kinda girly, but today, you're creeping me out! Just remember that folks, men don't share their feelings. I just wanna find some forever nights and pound them. Although Kevin's kinda right there though. There's a time and place for this. They gotta be focused. These kind of talks should be saved for when they're not in the mission. Deterion energy mine? Deterion energy mine. So that's what these things must be called. I wonder if that's on the technology page on the wiki. No, oh, it doesn't appear to be yet. Looks like it could be level three or four tech though, based on the surrounding entries. Kevin's turning to stone. Is this sewer cover made of stone? I always thought these things were made of metal. <laughs> Honestly, that's some pretty solid vibrato, especially when trying to sound like an alien. D. Bradley Baker, you talented motherfucker. This sewer head already looks like it's above ground before it starts breaking. Yes. But it also seems to disappear between shots. What a coincidence. But actually, how could the ground be deteriorating below them right here when they're not even using one of the mines right now? Urian's holding it in his arm. Like, nothing should be causing them to fall through the ground right now. Oh, the return of the laser lances. It's been a bit since we've seen these. I think they're being deliberately hurtful. Maybe I should start responding to hater comments with that. Yo! This Ben's like flinching though. Are they all connected? Kind of like ditto? There's also like nothing going on with this Ben at all. He's gotten maybe like 15 seconds of screen time compared to the other two Bens. He might as well have just split himself in half. Shall we work towards a consensus that lets us both feel invested in the plan? Ben's really worried about Kevin feeling useless. Kind of a testament to his strength though. Like he definitely could wipe out these knights by himself. This doesn't look like metal either. They're getting his materials all kinds of wrong in this episode. <laughs> Pipe hit him so hard that he de-transforms. Pipe must be stronger than Vilgax. Mungosaur has also been lit on fire, thrown through countless walls, and shot by all kinds of weaponry. But this one pipe gets to him. Now we're inside of the museum. This is very nicely designed too. In fact, this door pattern right here kind of looks like the hands of Armageddon. Although despite being the same location, the interior of this museum looks very different in Omniverse. I mean, it could have been renovated. It had to have been renovated actually with this giant hole in the ground. I'm pretty sure they end up destroying a little bit more of it in Ben 10,000 Returns as well. Man's got a skull on his butt. Talk about talking out your ass. 
weird how there's no sound effect for this. Light doesn't actually make sound, but in animation, you usually get some type of audio cue for this. Do not touch the exhibit. He took the sign down, though. Guess it's a free-for-all. Where's the usual smack talk? It's what we do. Yeah, Ben, don't forget your daily amount of verbal abuse. That's bad sportsmanship. And we should respect the ego space of our opponents. Yeah, see, this Ben definitely should have went to Julie's tennis match, and it probably would have been fun. Villains are people, too. Villains are people, too. I love whenever Ben escapes the black and white morality he sometimes has. <laughs> Man, museums should really start checking out if these things are magically enchanted or not. Like in the world of Ben 10, that should be a procedure before just putting something on display. This thing forming out of the wall though is pretty cool. Look how when the hand pops out, the fingers start gaining their own depth and everything that surrounds him fits in a piece of the wall sculpture. Y'all know me, I love me a good morph, complemented by red lightning and smoke. This is pretty good. This is probably the best animated sequence in the whole episode. The episode, it doesn't look bad, it just looks very bland. Like Ben 10 has had some impressive animation in its show, so it sets a pretty high bar. And this episode just kind of scrapes by. <laughs> I do like this focus shift when the foot lands though. It's a little dynamic. Ancient Aztecs by a race of aliens. Now this suit is pretty cool. Nice to see something different than just a typical robot suit. It's funny, Kevin effortlessly catches himself in a roll and Ben slams into a display. How could you let your guard down like that? Coming from the man who couldn't even dodge a welding torch last episode. Okay, Tin Man. So this proves that Kevin's replicating his materials now, because he only absorbs enough to cover his hand, but then he stands up and he's continuing to absorb. You can also notice a subtle wiggle of his outlines, because for every frame the metal coats his skin, they have to redraw what's already there, and redrawing everything exactly as it's supposed to be is a lot of time and effort. And since Kevin absorbs so many materials every episode, you know, it's fine to kind of rush through it sometimes. And this, Ben. I forgot they do this split screen thing. How are they even able to do this? Does he call himself and all the cell phones are linked? This man can clone cell phones now too. He could just replicate anything. Can he do that with food? Can he do that with larger objects? He does replicate the tennis racket in Inspector 13. This is nuts. You could also see Ben in two different color palettes at the same time. Is everyone having a good time? It's okay. Wow, Ben really, really does not care about Julie's tennis match. On my way, hero stuff to do. Oof, man, Julie really deserves better. These old men are still here. Also, here's the hole that Humongosaur and other Ben fell through, and it looks like everything is in a completely different position from when we last saw it. In fact, this whole circle right here was much, much smaller. If I wasn't running for my life, I totally demand an explanation. Kevin's got his priorities in order. Been today, and we were trying to be sensitive to- Kevin already said he doesn't need an explanation, Ben. Stop wasting time. Again, running for my life. The shot was fine until he started running forward. That looks a little weird. I admire the ambition, though. You can even see the theater that Ben just came from in the corner right here. Three of you? It's slammer time. Should, should that count as a hero time? I'm not gonna count it, but it should have been. So here, he squeezes something, I guess, and the Ultimatrix dial pops up. You can see it's slightly glow too when it extends. This is probably the coolest part of the episode. In all three times, the Ultimatrix is drawn with its maximum amount of detail. I appreciate that. Although Big Chill, Upchuck, and Cannon Bolt, that's an interesting combination of aliens. Although his roll animation right here is pretty good. Definitely better than the previous episode. <laughs> So this shows no matter which alien Ben was going to choose, he would attack the left leg first, which is smart, try to catch it off balance, but does not work for multiple aliens. Although Ben just completely missed here. Look, even if Urian didn't dodge, there's no way he was going to hit him. Can you imagine if all three became way big? That'd be freaking nuts! Also shows that Upchuck is impervious to his own acidic spit. In fact, speaking of, this is the first time we've ever really seen Upchuck spit out some type of streamed liquid. Usually it's always like a plasma ball or something. Maybe it's all that smoothie he drank from In Charm's Way. This is a lot less fun than I thought it would be. Have we ever seen Upchuck's eyelids like this before? This is kind of the right material. They're both stone, but not the same color. This is a giant mace. I love this. Time for a meeting of the minds. Already? They 
barely tried this. They're not trying to form a plan of attack. They're not trying different aliens or all becoming the same aliens. They're just giving up. They're like, well, this sucks. That's that's crazy disappointing. This is such a unique opportunity. And Ben's just going to throw it away because they couldn't defeat Yurian within 10 seconds. They each did one attack each and called it a day. Although we've never seen Big Chill do this before, just open up his cloak slightly underneath to hit the Ultimatrix dial. So that's pretty cool. <sighs> That's it. You've gone back from three to one. Wow, there's a gradient. They kind of stopped doing that in the first two seasons of Alien Force. I always thought it made certain shots look pretty interesting, though. Without them, the art style is objectively more flat. You'd think so. See, look how good this shot looks. Without the gradient, he would pop too much and put some focus on his general body rather than putting the focus on his head. <laughs> And now that he's all combined, his reflexes seem to have improved. Love how he activates the Ultimatrix in midair. You'd think that because he's made of stone that it wouldn't work. I guess all the metal properties inside of the stone's material is what gives him the edge. Every time. Oh. He actually faints from it. See, like, what if all three of them became Lodestar and attacked him from different angles? Like, there doesn't really seem to be an advantage of being one Ben as opposed to the split three. He just didn't try. He didn't even take the time to figure out a workaround. My god, Kevin looks dead right now. And everybody's left. I'm glad you won your tournament, Julie. She still won, too. Good for you. Under all that pressure, being publicly embarrassed, and having two out of the three people there to support you ditch the game. For complicated reasons, mind you, let's be fair. But she still won. That is that is top tier skill. Ben, I know you were off fighting bad guys. I wasn't fighting bad guys when he was late in the first place, though. I guess that's a deal when you decide to date a superhero. <sighs> mm -mm. It's not just that. He also publicly embarrassed her, openly tried to cheat on her in front of a huge crowd, and openly admitted that he does not care about Julie's tennis match. Julie, you don't have to put up with any of this. Maybe we could go see Sumo Slammers, the movie, together. You know what's funny as fuck? I totally forgot she even suggested that. There's literally two whole scenarios, both with and without him cloning himself, where things could have done much better, and Ben just chose the worst options. Take out the knights during the break, support Julie's tennis match, see Sumo Slammers after the movie. Or two, just switch the arrogant and sensitive Ben's positions, but no. Already saw it. During your match? Oh. Rightfully so. And you are so insensitive. Facts, though. Good. Sit there and think about what you've done. Happy 100th episode, Ben 10, you absolute dipshit. So some of y'all might be surprised by this, but I'm only going to give this episode the plot of a wand. I feel like I did a pretty thorough analysis of this throughout the regular breakdown, so I'll try to keep this brief and hit the bullet points. One, on top of a decision on whether to chase the knights or supports Julie's game, Ben creates a whole third problem out of nowhere. Two, the knights are so much of a joke now that we all just bought the idea that there was just this random Mayan suit in the middle of the museum that they were able to control and nobody really cared because that's how insignificant the knights are in the lore of Ben 10. Not that they have to be significant, but it's like whenever you know the knights are there, you know that you don't need to get as invested because they're so easily defeated. Whereas if the trio just all teamed up to take them down, things would be good. They had three whole hours before the next tennis game, right? In fact, let me double check before I go back on this rant. The finals are in three hours. Yep, see? Plenty of time to go take out the knights. In three, Ben puts together the coolest power set to use all of the Echo Echoes to duplicate himself and then turn into multiple aliens at once, and throws it away because he couldn't figure out how to do it within 30 seconds. And his split personalities are just like any group of people. You just need to learn to work together, put aside your differences and perspectives. And because it's all Ben, they all have the same skill set. It was basically trying to imply that because Ben was divided, that he wouldn't be able to be used useful in combat. And even if that was true for his first instance of doing it, he literally never does this again. What would happen if he split himself into only two? Would the personalities be more balanced? What if he split himself into ten, like the original episode intended? Would each one of them have an even stronger and more isolated personality trait? This also opens up a lot of questions about how the Ultimatrix works and Sonorosians in general. I don't know, man. Especially for the hundredth episode of Ben 10, you'd think this would be something spectacular. And granted, I don't even think it was advertised 
is the 100th episode of Ben 10. If it was, then this is even more of a letdown. But it's like this episode itself lays out a clear path for everything to work out perfectly and does everything it can to make it seem like the stakes are much higher than they need to be and things are more complicated than they really are. And while you can play that up to being a character flaw, as in even though there's a logical path to take, the characters themselves might deviate from what is the right thing to do. There's dozens of episodes prior which shows these characters are more than comprehensive and capable of doing things the right way and figuring out the solutions to these easily solvable problems, and they just don't. They dance around the obvious for no other reason than to develop the conflict. It's out of character, it's enraging for the audience, and I can't even say like this was a fun episode too. Like you'd think above everything else that this would be a fun episode because Ben duplicates himself, and it's not. One of the Bens is more of an asshole than he normally is, if you can believe that. One of the Bens is 100% inconsequential. And Sensitive Ben, he had some pretty great scenes, I will give him that. The scenes with him and Kevin together were hilarious. And he did seem pretty capable of taking on the knights if he just dialed back his sensitivity a little bit. But aside from some playful dialogue, they really didn't do a lot with this premise either. Characterization, I'm gonna give it a 1 as well. In similar episodes where almost everybody is out of character, at least Kevin is still written well. Gwen, while I like how she was very defensive about Julie, did kind of discredit the knight's threat, which did seem almost too much in favor of Julie's side. Like, she really should be like, alright, yeah, the knights are dangerous. But that's just like saying if a problem happens so often, it's inevitable and you might as well just not do anything about it. That doesn't seem like Gwen at all. Ben? We've been over it. Julie was okay. At first she was a little too accepting of Ben, but then she gets upset when it turns out he saw the movie without her, which makes total sense. But I feel like she puts up with so much that she's starting to not become a character herself. Like I would have dumped Ben right then and there, and maybe projecting my own personal views onto a character and then calling that character written terribly isn't fair. But at the same time, Ben and Julie have been together for a bit, and then they stay together till the end of Ultimate Alien, and she just excuses so much of Ben's bullshit that it's it does feel like it's at the sacrifice of her own personality. And the knights just don't matter. Visuals, I'll give it a 2. I really wish I can give it a more because of the fact that the Bens clone themselves is a really cool concept, and there could have been a lot of cool things done with it. But there was really nothing of note to happen in this episode. The animation was okay, it was, it was passable, but it was like just just enough. Even UAF has given us a lot better sequences than this, and there's so much downtime in this episode that it does drag on, and I wouldn't be surprised if people started zoning out. Importance, it's gonna get a 1. I feel like plot-wise it deserves a 0, but this episode is brought up frequently in the fandom, because Ben cloning himself with Echo Echo, you just can't ignore that, and I feel like it's worth watching just to understand the concept. But beyond that, nothing in this episode matters, and the fact that Ben can clone himself with Echo Echo never comes up again, and he never tries it again either. And entertaining, it can be a 3. That's where the cloning matters the most in terms of this rating system, is the fact that Ben clones himself is pretty neat, even if they don't do a lot with it. Just seeing the three Bens try to make everything work, and despite the payoff being less than lackluster, I at least appreciate that they tried this episode in the first place. That leaves Duped Off with an 8 out of 25, a very disappointing score for the second episode of Ultimate Alien, right after I'm trying to say that Ultimate Alien really isn't that bad. This sets a very terrible precedent. And for the 100th episode special, kinda doubles down on the fact that it feels like the franchise has really fallen apart. Luckily, things do improve as Ultimate Alien continues, and then Omniverse becomes a breath of fresh air. But right now, this is a very rough patch for Ben 10. Here's a fun fact. TJ Collins, character designer for UAF and eventually Omniverse, cameos as a background character in this episode. He even designed his own look, but it was fine-tuned by the time the episode debuted. As for last week's poll, it seems most people are in favor of Ben's secret identity being revealed, and I agree. It creates new relationships for Ben in his own world, and gives the writers new scenarios to put him in. For this poll, I wanted to ask if you think that Ben should continue to try using the new Echo Echo power. On one hand, I feel like it would make things too complicated, both from a writing standpoint, as well as for Ben's own character, but on the other hand, they already introduced the concept, so they might as well try to do something with it. I'm kinda torn on whether or not I really would've liked to see this come back, so let me know what you think when this video goes live. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and as always, keep it fizzy.